Hello everyone, my name is Shafi. Uh, today in this class we are going to discuss about cube. Okay, the chapter objectives. First we'll look into the overview of the cube. Next, the key features of the cube gateway. Cube deployment modules. Uh, where we can use the cube. Next, media flows on the cube. Means how many different media flows we have. Uh, once the call got established. Uh, then... DTMF supports in the cube, what different types of DTMF supports. And finally, uh, this is not conf not configuring MGCP gateway. It's a configuring the cube gateway here, this one. Okay. It's a typo error. So in the next time I'm going to be changing this one. This is not an MGCP. This is the cube configuration here, this one. Let's look into the cube overview of the cube. What exactly this cube? Cube stands for Cisco Unified Border Element. Okay. So Cisco called as IP to IP gateway and industry called as a SBC here, this one. For this cube, okay, in a Cisco, we call it IP to IP gateway, but other vendors in the industry, they call it as a SBC, session border controller. Okay, it's a gateway that allows both inbound and outbound calls of VoIP types. Means this is normal gateway, voice gateway. You are aware of the voice gateway, right? But both the end, it will be having the IP to IP and it be allows uh, inbound and outbound calls, VoIP types. VoIP means voice or IP. Means both the end, we have the IP addresses here, this one. Okay. It's a border between two networks. Next, protocol interoperability. That means it is having the ability to work with the multiple protocols. So what exactly the cube and how... Uh, why we call it as a cube this one it's very simple here for an example i'm having a cucm okay internal network where ip phones are registered here multiple ip phones this one. then this cucm is connected to the gateway now from the cucm to gateway it's an ip based communication right we use the ip address Sorry, how CUCM uh, communicate to the gateway through IP address. Again, how IP, uh, gateway uh, communicate to the CUCM? It's an IP based communication. Then uh, we have the ITSP here, Internet Telephony Service Provider. Okay, now I'm grabbing a connection from the ITSP. So to communicate from this gateway to this ITSP also, it's an IP based IP address, IP based communication. See the gateway. One end, it's connected to the internal network, the call manager, and another end, it's connected to the external network, the ITSP. Both the end, it use IP-based communication. That is what IP to IP gateway. Okay. Now here, what happened this one? You can use any protocol. Now between call manager to gateway, we have to use some protocol to communicate here. And again, from the gateway to ITSP, we have to use some protocol. Now you can use any protocol here, this one. Okay. So any protocol means, see, uh, this is here. It is a border between the two different network. One is the internal network, one is the external network. So in between, this is a gateway, it will be act as a border here, this one. So what happened here? See, between the gateway to ITSP, I'm using SIP protocol. And between the call manager to the gateway also, I can use SIP protocol. One option. Another option between the call manager to the gateway, I can use H.323 protocol. And between the gateway to ITSP, again, I can use H.323 protocol. Okay. Now, one end I can use H.323 protocol. Another end I can use SIP protocol. Or uh, this end I can use H.323 protocol. This end I can use SIP protocol, this one. However you want, you can use this one. Both the end, you can use same protocol, SIP, SIP, or H.323, H.323, or one end H.323, another end SIP. Now, this protocol you can use anywhere. There is no condition that one SIP, it has to use here or there, this one. Any protocol, anywhere you can use this one. So, that's the reason it's called protocol interoperability. That means, so this, the moment, if you are using IP base here and here, this will be act as a cube. Cisco Unified Border Element here, this one. Okay. Now, it will be having the ability to work any protocol. One end, H.323 you can implement. Another end, SIP you can implement. Or both the end, you can implement same protocol. Either SIP or H.323, this one. So, that's how 
this is called cube protocol. Why it's a called cube? It's a IP to IP communication here. Next terminates and originates signal and media uh, streams between H.323, 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 SIP, SIP to SIP, SIP to H.323 means. So now between the call menu to the gateway and gateway to ITSP, any protocol you can implement that one. <laughs> media <laughs> interworking. See, DTMA, fax, modem, codec transcoding means here the cube we are using not only to establish the call along with the call there are other okay media protocol it works example fax for example you want to send fax call okay so fax call also cube having the ability to receive the fax call also the codec transcoding transcoding means what happened this one so if you remember whenever we want to communicate both then it should have the same codec then only it's possible to communicate if it is having a different codec then it's not possible to communicate this one okay suppose if it is having a two different codec still you want to be communicate there is a concept of transcoding that's in a part of the media resources okay in the upcoming classes we'll look into that one what exactly media resources okay how many types of media resources we have and how exactly it works okay suppose you want to implement the transcoding on the cube router yes it support the transcoding and also dtmf dtmf dual tone multi frequency so in the upcoming slide we'll look in uh, discuss more in detail about what exactly the dtmf this one okay not only to establish the call it also support the media protocols media networking dtma fax or transcoding address and port translation privacy and topology hiding yes it's a uh, uh, what exactly here See, whenever the call is coming from the call manager to the gateway, okay, again, from the gateway, it's originating the new call leg to ITSP here, this one. So that's the reason what happened internally, actually, the call is coming from the call manager, but it will be not showing that the call is coming from the call manager. So that's one security part when the call is uh, originating from the gateway. Okay, centralized bandwidth management. Okay, bandwidth management, centrally, we can be manage that one so this is about the uh, cube and these are the different features of the cube we have here this one see the protocol it supports hr323 and sip protocol uh, network heading uh, network heading means what happened see call is coming from where ip phone to call manager call manager to the gateway right but where it is going outside it will not display any call manager information it display the call is originated as from the gateway here that one that that is what ip network privacy and topology hiding ip network security boundary because it's a it's a it it will be act like a proxy okay next call admission control this is the uh, feature we use for uh, bandwidth management okay suppose you want to be implement the bandwidth management you can be you remember uh, region region defines what region defines uh, how much bandwidth you can use per side that one okay that's a part of call admission control that we can be configured here okay protocol and uh, uh, signal internet working so we can use any protocol h.323 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 sip sip to sip any protocol we can use for media rtp and rtcp okay media modes media flow through and media flow around we have this one so we'll discuss uh, detail about what exactly this media flows and video codec suppose you are making the video call these are different codec it support transport port it support uh, tcp udp and both it will be using this one okay tcp to udp internet working and uh, fax protocol uh, these are the t38 uh, fax through fax relay it will be used modem support modem pass through cisco modem relay means suppose you are using the as a modem services then dtmf these are the different types of dtmf supports again i'll be we'll be looking into the uh, dtmf later supplementary services supplementary services uh, for an example you are transferring the call you are forwarding you are putting the call on hold all this supplementary supports nat traversal okay suppose you have implemented internally you have a different network and outside you want to go into the different network then nat has to be implemented okay quality of service uh, ip precedence and dscp marking everything suppose you want to implement uh, qos on the cube router it supports all means 
if you take a voice gateway on a router, what are all the uh, options available uh, to implement for the IP telephony? All the protocols, all the services, all the media, okay, everything it, it's possible to be implement that one, okay. So that's how uh, we have the uh, key features of uh, Cube Gateway. So again, uh, no number translation, yes. You can manipulate if you want to manipulate the number. If you remember, whenever the call is coming from the provider, it will be coming with a 10 digit DID number, but internally will be having five or six digit. You want to be manipulate that number, the calling number or call number that can be done. And codec, these are the different types of G.711, ELA, EULA, 23, uh, 26, 28, 29, LBC, all the codec it's supporting. Yes, transcoding, okay. To convert, to communicate between the two different coding, the transcoding has to be implemented. Okay, security we can implement. AAA we can configure, voice and media application, billing, everything. Okay, so every every feature, every uh, you know, uh, every feature uh, which where the gateway support everything we can be able to be configured under the cube here. This one, okay, cube deployment uh, modules we have. Uh, one is the centralized we have, one is the distributed we have, another one is the hybrid module we have. This one, centralized means what happened? So this is my headquarter. Okay, and this is my branch office. Can you see this one? Branch office here. Whenever if you make a call, what happened here? Suppose this is the branch office here. From the branch office, first it goes to the headquarter. In a headquarter, we have the cube router. From this cube router, the call goes outside. See, this is called centralized deployment. Centralized deployment, we are not taking any uh, connection uh, means uh, PSTN connection or ITSP connection, we are not taking to the branch office. Suppose this is my Bangalore, this is in a Chennai. Okay. Now, whenever if you want to make a call, always from Chennai, it connects to the Bangalore. Bangalore, we have a cube router. From this, it will be connecting to the provider. See, from Chennai, we don't have direct action to connection to the provider here, this one, any kind of provider here. This type of, sorry, this type of deployment, it's a centralized deployment, okay? So always the call goes to centralized office, from there it connect. If the call is coming from the provider, it comes to the Bangalore, from the Bangalore, it will be connecting to the your branch office here, this one. So now how the connections comes, how the communication comes from the branch office to central office, we are using MPLS, okay, MPLS. Again, uh, see what happened whenever you have a multiple branches. Okay. Now we are not using MPLS, but in the topology, it's having the MPLS. Uh, but the latest technology we are using is um, SD-WAN. Okay. SD-WAN, uh, that's the latest technology we are using. But earlier, MPLS was there. Uh, what exactly this MPLS, SD-WAN, all these things? Uh, whenever you have a branch offices, okay, from one branch to another branch, if you want to communicate, okay, yes, of course, internet will be there, but it will be create one tunnel. Tunnel means it's a private network. All your information, for an example, I'm having, so this is my data center, okay, it, it's located in uh, Sweden, example, and this is my office, here it's in Bangalore here, okay. Now to connect from Bangalore to the Sweden, obviously internet connection will be there. But what we are doing here, this one, from Bangalore to the Sweden, we implement SD-WAN. Means for that SD-WAN devices we have, we install device, one device here in the branch office, one device in the headquarter, and we be, will be creating a tunnel from Bangalore to Sweden. But actually the traffic will be carried through the internet. For that internet is required, okay? But actually, it's a secure communication. It will be carrying with a high bandwidth, uh, very large amount of the data, very fast. It will be communicate. That's how it will be carry the data from the branch office to the headquarter. Like this. Now, this type of setup will be there in every organization. Okay. You take any company, every organization, they'll be having this type of setup here. Okay. Now, here also you can see, now in this, here we have an MPLS. But still few companies, few organizations, they are using an MPLS. But the latest technology, the SD-WAN is the latest technology. Okay. So now in the SD-WAN, Cisco SD-WAN, we have uh, Viptela, we have 
uh, so that's i think part of uh, this one and we have the one more thing uh, okay uh, we have sd van okay sd van also we have this one that's how we'll be connecting distributed means what happened okay so this is the headquarter this is a branch office right every branch office you are keeping one cube okay see this is the bang uh, for example this is the bangalore this is the sweden see bangalore office we have one cube uh, which is connected directly to the centralized office that's the distributed most of the time you can see this type of deployment distributed every location there will be one gateway okay so the but ucm cluster will be distributed cluster centralized deployment okay uh, that will be there but uh, cube it will be connecting placing every location one in cube router they'll be placing on that one okay uh, especially here in, in asia countries but if you go to the european country we have an option to go with the centralized deployment centralized deployment for well, in my company also uh, in one location okay uh, that means consider uh, we have the office one two three four five offices we have so only in one office we have installed the cube rotor all these locations okay other uh, four locations we have right that location isp that uh, itsp is uh, terminated on the this cube rotor that one from there it will be connecting through sd van but here we because of the tri regulation uh, in asia countries it's not possible to do that one so locally we had to be install the gateway in each country like for example singapore it's mandatory locally we had to install the gateway sorry uh, go to the tokyo go to the uh, this one uh, hong kong go to the china india dubai okay anywhere here locally we have to install the gateway it's not possible to make it centralized one okay so that's a distributed a hybrid we have hybrid means it's a both okay see here what happened few branches it's with a centralized okay and few branches with a distributed that's how we have this one so see for example three branches it's connected in one location another two branches is connected to another location that's why hybrid deployment model we have this one okay so it's up to you this one uh, how you are going to be implement this deployment model depend on the country which country you have an office in that country do you have a permission to deploy like this then you can deploy here this one okay so if it is a small offices we can go with the centralized office if it is a very big uh, large amount of the calls are coming okay for one office the, there are huge uh, number of many users are there in that obviously you have to go to the distributed here this one this is how we have a three different types of deployment model how you can be implement your cube router on that see there are three types of deployment model centralized distributed and hybrid <laughs> where we can use cube sorry so this is your call manager so here we can use and again we can be used as a sbc then it will be connect to the sbc means what it's a itsp so this is the cube you can use okay so here so for example from the cube to cucm head dot 32 protocol i'm using from the gateway to service provider i'm using sip protocol here this one or any other sip application we have this one so that's how we have the cube cube we can use anywhere but only the thing is both the end it should be the ip to ip based communication then it's called as a cube cisco unified border element so in a cisco we call it as a cube or ip to ip based communication but other vendor it's called it as a sbc session border controller mm -hmm. it will be a public IP address. Obviously, internal uh, private IP address, we get it. External one, it's a public IP address, we get it. Okay. So next, we have the media flows. Next, we'll discuss about the media flows on Cube. Okay. <laughs> we have uh, two media flows. Uh, Cube is a signaling uh, proxy. It is also 
uh, process all signaling message regarding the setup of media channels. This enables Cisco, this enables Cube to affect the flow media traffic. Uh, one is a media flow through and another is a media flow around. Whenever if you make a call, okay, we use two protocols. One is a signaling protocol and another is the streaming protocol. Signaling protocol, it is used to establish the call. After that, once you establish the call, okay, to carry your real-time voice, RTP protocol comes. That is a streaming protocol that is called media here, this one. Example. Example. Once again. Here, can you see this one? This is my CUCM cluster. This phone is registered under here. Okay. There is another CUCM cluster here. The other phone is registered here. Now I'm making a call. Okay. <laughs> when I'm making a call, what happened? See, the call is hitting to the call manager. From the call manager, it goes to the cube. From the cube, it goes to the another call manager. From the another call manager, it will be connect here. This is called signaling protocol. Signaling means what? To establish the call. After that, a destination, user answered the call. Now RTP comes, media flow. Now what happened? Media is flowing. See, RTP, there is no condition that one RTP has to be flow via call manager. RTP can flow anywhere here, this one. So now, from the IP phone, my RTP is straight, it's going to the cube. See, it's not going to the call manager here. Okay. From here, straight, it's going to the IP phone. See, in between the call manager is not involving here. Not involving means RTP is not flowing via the call manager. And it's not mandatory to flow the RTP via call manager. RTP can flow any direction. <clears throat> okay. So that is what, okay, what happened here, this one. RTP can flow from any direction here, this one. So this, suppose if the RTP is flowing via your cube, see, but the RTP is hitting to the cube, right? See, the RTP is not hitting to the call manager, but RTP, RTCP, RTP is hitting to the cube. For this we call, okay, media flow through. Means media also, see, signaling also flowing via cube, media also flowing via cube. For this we can call media flow through. Media flow around means, Okay, now it will not use cube for the media here. See, same diagram. I'm calling from here. Call is hitting to the call manager. From the call manager, the cube. Cube to the call manager, again hitting. But RTP is flowing directly from this IP phone to this IP phone. Either it's not going to the call manager or the cube. For this, we call flow around here. Okay, so if RTP is flowing via cube, it is called flow through. If RTP is not flowing via cube, it's called flow around. This you can configure on the cube. How your uh, RTP has to be flow or media has to be flow that one. So that's how you have. Another one, media anti-trombone detects loop in the media path. Suppose if for an example, <clears throat> scenario is like, <clears throat> I have an external number. Uh, sorry, I have a number, toll-free number. Toll-free number I'm having. That toll free number which is connecting where my internal network it's connecting. So let me explain. This is how I'm having a setup. This is my CUCM. And these are my phones. And this is connected to gateway. From here, it's connected to ITSP. Here, there is one guy. This guy is dialing one number, 18002413. This is the toll free number dialing. <laughs> Somewhere, uh, this is how the call flow. Call is coming to the gateway. From here, it will be coming to the CUCM. From the CUCM, somewhere it's configured some IVR. So for example, this device, it has to connect. It is connecting to this device here. Whenever we dial the toll free number, it's connecting to the this device here in this one. Okay. That's fine. No issue. Now, from this phone, 
I am dialing a toll free number. One eight double zero double two four one three M. The call goes here. From here, it goes to here. From here, it goes to ITSP. Right now, ITSP will be sending back this call here again. Again, gateway. From the gateway, again the call is coming to this UCM. From here, it connects. But in this scenario, what happened here? The call is going from the same gateway. Again, the call is coming. This is called loop. Loop is creating, right? Now, in this scenario, now this is an intelligent device. Now, if it is creating, it's going to terminate here itself. Means RTP. It will not allow to round the traffic via ITSP. So, that is what? <coughs> Media anti-trombone. Got it? That's how, suppose if you have a scenario like this, you can be. But very less... Uh, time we get it the senior uh, things like this one so this is how what we have if you want to be configured you can be configured the things here got it this is how three media flows you have okay but very famous is media flow through media flow around it's all these are very simple actually only the thing is you have to remember the things and the coming to the configuration there is no much configuration here so any any like hedgehog three two three we have configured or MGCP we have configured SIP we have configured we don't have any much configuration very simple configuration we have but concept wise it's very big okay you had to understand many components uh, many things uh, the topologies everything you had only you had to remember that one so uh, for to crack the interview yes but uh, for the uh, configuration. Uh, real time what we have covered in the lab is different and what we cover in the production is different that's depend on the protocol but still it's very simple configurations we have not any uh, high end configuration this one if you know the concept easily you can understand it can work so even if anybody ask about the cube there is it's very simple here this one okay how the they, uh, there is a chance in an interview they can ask about how the media will flow in the cube how many types of uh, media flow we have. Okay, at least there are three types. If you explain about, they'll be expecting the first and second, flow through and flow around here. Very simple, flow through, flow around means, flow through means media is flowing via cube, flow through means, so now the media will not flow via cube here. That's it, very simple, this one. So that's how the media flow we have in the cube here, this one. Next, next DTMF. What is this DTMF? means DTMF stands for dual tone multi-frequency. Dual tone multi-frequency. Why we require this DTMF? In which scenario we use the DTMF? If you remember, so how many protocol we require to communicate? Two protocol. Which are those? Signaling and streaming protocol we have. For an example, this is my CUCM. And these are my IP phones. And this is my gateway, and which is connected to ITSP. Here there is one guy, again one eight double zero double two four one three. Something there is a toll free number. Every you are aware, right? Whenever we dial the toll free number, okay, we have a concept of IVR system, interactive voice response. Okay, now I am having one IVR system here. Call is coming, hitting. Now IVR is answering the call. Before to that, whenever to make a call, we require two protocol. One is the signaling protocol, right? The second one is, sorry, <laughs> oh, sorry guys, streaming protocol. Signaling protocol to establish the call. Then streaming protocol, where RTP is coming, right? RTP and RTCP protocol is coming under the streaming protocol. See, once call got established and RTP is flowing, RTP we carries what? Media information and real-time voice information it carries here. When it is carried this information, in between if you press any number, see, for example, source, destination, okay, I'm sending invite, then, 100 trying, 
180 ringing, 200 okay. Acknowledgement. This is signaling protocol. Now RTP, RTP, RTCP. This is RTP. When the RTP is carrying, when RTP is carrying, now user is pressing one. It will not carry that one on the RTP. You are giving right one. Already call got established. If you press one, it will not carry any information. Once the RTP got established, if the user is pressing any number, any input, one, two, three, or any number, it will not carry over the RTP protocol. That is a by default nature. Okay. Got it this one? Now coming to the IVR system here. <laughs> I'm calling some toll-free number. IVR is answering call. Means, welcome to ABC company. Press 1, press 2. That means, welcome to ABC means RTP is flowing, right? RTP is flowing here. When the RTP is flowing, now IVR asking me to press 1, 2, 3. Now user is press, giving the input. 1, 3, 5. This is how the input it is giving here, this one. When the RTP is carrying, when the user gives any input, it will not carry the RTP. That's a by default nature. But in this scenario, it has to carry. Right. If I press one, then only it select the language. If I press three, then only it select the service. If I press five, according to that, it will be wrote the call. It has to mandatory. We have to put. See, RTP got established. After establishing the RTP, by default, if you dial any number, it will not carry over the RTP. But in a case of IVR system, after RTP got established, when the user is giving the any input, like press one, press two, press three, it has to carry that number over the RTP. So for that, we require DTMF. Without DTMF, it will not carry. Without DTMF, it will not. Why? Because by default, it will not carry anything. By default, it will not carry anything over the RTP. Now here, along with the RTP, it has to be carry the your inputs. For this, DTMF has to be configured. This DTMF, both the end has to be configured. DTMF has to be configured on the ITSP also. DTMF has to be configured in your gateway also. This one. This is called dual tone multi-frequency. Obviously, in many company you go, every company, they'll be having the toll-free number. They'll be having the IVR system. So it has to be, gateway has to be answered that call. So for that one, DTMF has to be configured. So that is what we have a different types of DTMF. Okay. And... Uh, depend on the protocol. Suppose you are using H.323 protocol or SIP protocol you are using, which DTMF it has to be used. Okay. That is what this slides defines here, this one. Suppose <laughs> both the end H.323 you have. Means on the gateway also I have implemented H.323. On ITSP also we have the H.323. Okay. Then what uh, DTMF you have to configure? See, alphanumeric here also, here also. Here H.245 signal. These are the DTMF methods. Okay, suppose one end head dot three to three, you have another end SIP, you have this one. Okay, suppose in a head dot three to three, if you have configured alpha numeric, other end you have to configure notify. Okay, both the end you have SIP SIP. What DTMF you have to be configured? Most of the time, if it is the same protocol, okay, both the end we use same DTMF. See here, notify, notify, RFC two eight three three. Notify RFC 2833, RFC 2833, KPML, KPML, voice in band, RFC 283. Getting the point? See here, voice in band, RFC. Can you see this one? Almost same here. Suppose two different protocol we have, which DTMF we have to be configured. So that is what the DTMF here. Again, DTMF also, it's very important. Sometimes in an interview, they'll ask, what is this DTMF? How many types of DTMF we have? Means you have to remember at least, uh, SIP we have, <laughs> okay? Notify we have, RFC 2833 we have, KPML we have, voice in band we have, 23. Here, head dot 245 alphanumeric, head dot 245 signaling, RFC 2833. See, RFC 2833, so it comes in the SIP also and it comes in the head dot 323 also. It's very simple, 33 you have to be, you can use it this one. Okay, and notify and another end, it can be any you can use. Okay, see one end notify I'm having, another end notify also you can use, or RFC 2833 also you can use, 
see notify i'm having another end alpha numeric also you can use or both the end are uh, notify notify or both the end uh, head dot two four five alpha numeric this is how you can be used the dtm signaling method these are the dtf signaling method <laughs> okay but to work with this dsp is required so not this one i had to change this one that's it about after the configuration comes okay the configuration of <laughs> okay after that uh, cube configuration comes very simple configuration okay you are already aware how you can configure hydra 33 gateway or sip protocol how you can implement same commands only extra changes we have extra few commands we have that you have to be configured that one except that one okay almost everything same what is that configuration how it comes and the real time configuration that i'll be show you in my real time uh, labs classes uh, that i'll show you so you can look into that one okay the how the configuration we have for the sip or the cube how we have and also we have uh, deployment model distributed we have uh, then after centralized we have right i'll show you both centralized how we have distributed how we have this one so that configuration i'll give you and also the basic configuration if you want i'll be you know uh, prepare the document and i'll be share you into the uh, this one group that one got it so that's it about the cube any questions any doubts <laughs>